Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for checking out this video. I appreciate it. Today we're going to be going over all the uh, exterior car care products that I actually use in my day to day detailing business. Now we're, this is going to be more of an overview. If you want to see exactly how I use each one of these individual products, well, that stuff is what I play and what I post in the ADP Secrets uh, membership page. So if you want, you can head over to adpsecrets.com. I'll link it below and you can see how I use each and every one of these products individually. But for this video, we're going to be doing an overview. So without further ado, would do, would do, would do, would do, would do. Let's get into it. Anyway, and we'll start over with the car wash. So this is also going to be a podcast. So I'll try to explain stuff as much as possible. So. When it comes to car washing, there's a couple different options and a couple different products that you can use, and these are two of my favorites. So if you're doing a waterless car wash, my favorite is Optimum No Rinse. I use this in a bucket, it's an ounce or two to a five gallon bucket, and I went about three years exclusively using Optimum No Rinse as my maintenance kind of car wash chemical of choice. Another benefit to Optimum No Rinse, as we'll see later, it can be diluted down to multiple things. So though I really didn't realize how many products I actually used on a day-to-day -day basis, but what I've actually tried to do is be more efficient with products. And so uh, this is a, a bit of a culmination in the products that I don't use a lot, I'll talk about. But the one cool, really cool thing about Optimum No Rinse is you can eliminate a lot of products that you see behind me with one product. So. Optimum no rinse if you're worried about water runoff, uh, getting fined for water runoff, or just wanna be eco-friendly. If you're not too concerned about being eco-friendly and you're looking for something that foams a lot, is readily available to purchase, and is not that expensive, the Turtle Wax Ice Snow Foam uh, is about, I think, 10 bucks for this bottle. Uh, smells really good, foam's amazing. You could use about one ounce in a foam cannon and it's gonna give you really thick, luscious foam. I usually pair it up with a gas pressure washer, which is what I have in my rig, um, but also works really well with, a, uh, with an electric pressure washer as well. And the Sniffy Sniff oh, just smells like bubble gum, which is amazing. So uh, this has been a really, again, throughout a lot of my videos, I talk about uh, not only do I torture products, but I talk about kind of how easy are they to get, um, what's the price point, and kind of all these factors culminated in one. So that's kind of what this video is all about. So that ice snow foam kind of nails it for me. I'll be honest, what I don't do a lot is wheel and tire cleaning. So, but when I do, I'd either pick up the Adams wheel and tire cleaner, which is good, um, which is great. The PNS is also a good alternative and option. Um, and then I also, there's a company named Proje uh, that I've helped out with some of their formulations that I use as well. Wheel and tire cleaners are basically degreasers. So I know people talk about the PNS has rust inhibitors. I don't, one, I don't know if that's true. Two, I don't know how you would actually prove that to be true or false either. Uh, so their all-in-one cleaner uh, by Proje is an APC. One thing I didn't have, I don't have up here uh, when it comes to wheel and tire cleaning is an iron remover. Um, and that's basically because I didn't have a nice bottle with a label on it. It's all junky and gross. It's also by the Proje brand. So we know the Adams wheel and tire, the PNS uh, do a great job with removing the browning. So does the Proje all-in-one cleaner. Uh, this is kind of the hidden gem, the uh, uh, acidic wheel cleaner. When I talk about acid and... Uh, water spot removal with an acid. Acids can be very gnarly and very, you wanna be cautious when you're using them, but they're super effective. So anything from water spot removal to cleaning chrome rims, you don't wanna do raw aluminum with acid, it will stain it, but uh, there's been nothing in the wheel uh, cleaning category that is most effective and most efficient as an acidic wheel cleaner. Uh, I use the Proje one as well, basically for the price and it's easy to obtain as well. Um, I, you don't wanna use an acid wheel cleaner every time you clean the car, but for those really nasty rims, um, and again, has kind of a dual purpose, uh, being uh, that you can use it for water spot removal, on glass paint, whatever. Same with the all-in-one cleaner, works well for a uh, tire or a rim if you're gonna use it every time, but you can also use it on the interior for cleaning plastics, carpets, stuff like that. That's one thing I haven't tested that I want to, just kind of as a side note, 
with the uh, Adams and the PNS wheel cleaner is, does it work on interiors? So going on from there, I know I've put out a few videos on it, but honestly, my go-to tire shine right now is the coverall. Also have a video either coming out or maybe it came out with the Meguiar's Insane Tire Coating, uh, which is basically the equivalent to this. They're both right about the same price, easy to, easy to obtain. Superior, not as easy to get as the Meguiar's uh, insane tire shine coating, whatever. Uh, but that's been my tire shine of choice. Up until now, I've had more of a sprayable tire shine and I use it with a, uh, with a brush to apply it to the tire. And that's how I've done it for a really long time when you're dealing with like water-based tire shines. However, I just like the long lasting ability of a solvent-based tire shine. And aerosol though could be pricey and you can run through it faster. Um, it just, it's kind of less mess. And then you could also use it on some of those plastic areas in the bumper, uh, the underneath part of the car where it's plastic, I guess I don't know what you call that. Bumpers and stuff, it's a, just a little bit more versatile, especially being in a sprayable format um, than like a, a traditional water-based spray dressing. All right, as we get into, let's go to exterior protectants. So, um, again, or, or this got moved over here, but this could be, again, the ADG wipeout uh, is very similar to the optimum no rinse uh, in, the, in the way that it can be used across multiple platforms. Excuse me, I kind of had my wife stage this up a little bit and this got moved. So I want to, I guess this could float between the quick detail sprays and the waterless wash. Uh, again, just for its versatility, it can go into glass cleaning. Um, it can go into interior wipe downs, almost like an interior detailer, which by the way, I'll have a whole separate video on my interior products. This is just exterior. So uh, I, I would clump the ADG wipeout with the optimum no rinse as basically the same. They're not the same as far as they're different brands, but they do the same functions. How about that? And can be diluted down to the same ratios and kind of say, uh, serve the same purpose. So, all right, when we move into exterior protectants, uh, for a long time, I used something as simple as the Meguiar's Synthetic Express Spray Wax, uh, which offers, it's a quick and easy way to add a quick layer of protection on a car. Uh, it would tend to streak for me a little bit, uh, but not too bad. And again, another versatile product. It can be used on interiors, leather seats, across the board. So. Uh, that, and then I discovered the ice turtle wax seal and shine, uh, which quickly rose to the top of being not only the most recommended product to customers who were looking to kind of DIY their own stuff, but I also used it as well up until more recently when I just switched over to the hybrid solutions, the ceramic spray coating. The reason why I like the hybrid ceramic spray coating over the seal and shine, the chemical durability is right about the same. What I like more about the ceramic spray coating is that it's more user friendly. So on those kind of finickety paints, on those finickety days, um, I'm getting a lot less streaking with the hybrid ceramic spray coating than I am with the seal and shine. Um, and again, just as easy to get, uh, just as easy to obtain and has incredible durability. So I really, one thing you don't see in here that, cause I just don't do it often. And this, this array of products is really like my day-to-day, -day, what's in my truck. In fact, before we recorded this video, I had to go out to my truck and get most of this stuff because this is what I actually use. And one thing you don't see is a paste wax or a liquid wax. And that's because I just don't use them. I really don't. And so that's why you don't see a lot of videos on those because I don't see where they fit in when you have something like a seal and shine, a hybrid ceramic spray wax, even the last coat which is kind of the bougier of the exterior protectants. Um, it has extreme durability when it comes to chemical resistance. Um, it's, it doesn't attract dust or doesn't seem like that. And if you don't feel comfortable, the reason why I have it in my, in my truck personally is because if you don't feel comfortable whipping out a turtle wax product or a consumer grade consumer packaged product, how about that? Even a Meguiar's or any consumer packaged product, um, this is a little bit more bougie, I guess, uh, of a product as far as price is concerned, um, but it still offers the durability and dependability, uh, at least in my testing that I found with uh, the Turtle Wax stuff. Uh, the Meguiar's hybrid, or not hybrid, 
that's one product that's not here. The hybrids, uh, ceramic wax, which, which I don't use at all. Uh, but the synthetic wax um, would be kind of a maintenance topper to either one of these three. Um, and again, I just don't see a need for, um, for a, a paste wax or a cream wax. I guess I'll move the ADG wipeout back to over here. Uh, this is not optimum no rinse, but this is kind of how I roll in my van sometimes as much as I don't want to admit it. Uh, this is just glass cleaner and the ratio for glass cleaner is a lot to a little. So a lot of water to a little cleaner. Uh, this I believe is also a Proje uh, water, uh, excuse me, a Proje glass cleaner. The dilution ratio is like, so this is a 32 ounce bottle, I think. And I literally put like an ounce of glass cleaner and fill the rest up with water. And that's what I do. So that is actually a glass cleaner back there. But ADG wipeout, optimum no rinse can also be diluted down about to the same ratios and used as a glass cleaner, which again would essentially erase having to have a separate gallon or a separate glass cleaner. You could just use that for that as well. When it, uh, Exterior One is actually a product that I use mainly here in the shop. And I did a whole video on this. If you want to see it, I'll try to remember to link it up in the description below. But Exterior One has been a really nice waterless wash. I use it on my client's Porsche that's here. And it's just a, like, a, like a thinkless product that you really don't have to, uh, that you really don't have to think much about and doesn't streak, doesn't do anything crazy. It's really, really efficient and effective. I don't use it, to be honest, too much out in the uh, real world, but I use it a lot here at the shop, especially when you pair it up with some microfiber towels. Uh, or the, the double flip microfiber towels like I showed in the video. Another product that has been replaced recently is HD Speed. So HD Speed has really been the standard, the go-to for one step polishing, but it's been replaced by two of these products. And I'll tell you the main reason for it, which is awesome that HD Speed did it as well. So the first is the new hybrid solutions, the ceramic polish and wax as they call it, which is an all in one. Um, and then also one product that I've been meaning to do a video on, but it kind of got trumped by this one today at least, is the Technician's Choice, who's also been known well for their ceramic detail spray that you don't see up here that I also use. But again, I didn't have a nice, I didn't have it packaged and bottled. So we'll add some CGI and add it to that, right, Brian? Joking, we're not gonna do that, <laughs> but I do use it. Uh, but Technician's Choice, they have a ceramic one-step polish and the reason why that these two products replaced HD Speed, and I look at these products as virtually almost identical, the reason why that they replaced HD Speed is because actually contrary to what people think and say, HD Speed, in my opinion, did leave behind some protection. Actually protection up in the form of like three months, right? But with the advancement in technology, these products are last longer, lay down better protection than HD Speed, and then also have that adjustable, or I shouldn't say also, similar to HD Speed, they have that kind of adjustable correcting ability. I know some of you would say filling ability, um, but they have the ability to, depending upon what machine and what pad you pair it with, you can actually get some decent paint correction out of it and, and make the surface look virtually flawless and put some protection. So I've actually, I look at both of these products as just like HD speed on steroids. So that's why these two have recently replaced the HD speed. Now, when it comes to correction, I use these two. So M100 for a long time has been the go-to. So M100, I still love it, use it very often when I'm going for super, super deep scratches. So super deep scratches, probably mostly on a rotary, but sometimes I've been known to pair it up on a DA with a foam pad, a stiff foam pad, and be able to do a one step, which is amazing. Uh, and the reason why so many people like it and the price, I guess I forgot to mention the price on a lot of these, but the price on this court, I think is around the $24 range. So it's an incredibly uh, effective and efficient product. It to me, when it comes to the compounds that Meguiar's offers is by far the all-star. Now, one thing that was released at SEMA last year was this, this, was, this is M110. The difference between 110 and 100, in my opinion, are a few things. 
the color, obviously the thickness of the abrasives in it. So you really can't feel it in your finger. Um, and then also the price, this is about 10 to $15 more per quart for the 110, uh, but is a little bit more, uh, or I was going to say user friendly, but a little less aggressive. M110 could ha has a lot of bite when you need to go for a really aggressive uh, scratch or defect. I always go 100. It's kind of like if 100 won't take it out, I'm not even going to try with anything else. 110 good is good, has really nice finishing ability and can also be used as a one step. Uh, the reason why you won't see M210 or 205 is I don't, I just don't like those products. I don't see a need for it. I jump from like a 100, 110 to the HD speed or now like the ceramic all in one. Uh, I guess if you didn't want to leave pr protection behind in my world of detailing, I just don't use a light polish that often. And every time I do, I'm questioning my sanity of why I do that. I guess from there we'll jump back. Well, no, we'll jump to the towels last. So, uh, when it comes to pads and machines, I actually use an array of, of pads and machines, both. Uh, probably one of the most versatile tools that I've gotten as of late is the Ibrid Nano, uh, the long neck. It, it's just one of those tools that like you didn't know you needed it or wanted it until you had it and then you don't know how you survived without it. So it's actually a super versatile tool for, it'll be in my interior, uh, in my interior video as well. But when it comes to machines, anything from a Max Shine to the Griots to the old school DeWalt that's like been rained on, sat outside and just as a total workhorse. Um, just the more tools that you have, the better. And that's why when we were setting this up, I'm like, crap, this is kind of a lot of stuff. But it's like you, as detailers, we're troubleshooters. And so the more tools, the more products that you have, the more tools you have to troubleshoot through problems. And that's why I'll have like, 110 and 100. I'll have the ceramic um, three in one by Turtle Wax and the Technician's Choice because you never know, depending upon the car and all that, what how it's going to react. Even down to machines, you could be using a Rupes and that car for whatever reason could not like it, and then you switch over to the Griots or the Max Shine or the Adams or whatever, and that car paint seems to like it. You never really know. The more tools you have, the better. So when it comes to pads, um, I pretty much stick to foam pads. So, and my foam pad of choice is by Buff and Shine. Uh, these are some ones that have just been released recently. I'm not sure if the backing's been released, uh, so I won't show that. But um, I mainly stick to foam pads. For a year or two, I got like obsessed with microfiber pads. And as of recently, it's kind of waned for me and I'm kind of on this foam only kick. Um, so I think, this, this medium, so this is a buff and shine medium cut pad. This is a maroon, their Eurotech foam. This I think is the best option pad out there. It's medium. It's right in the middle. It's not, I really don't like soft pads at all, but when you pair something like this maroon medium cut, it's a, th it's a thick foam. That's fairly hard. Um, but when you pair this with something like the technician's choice all in one, polish or same HD speed with hybrid solutions or whatever. It is a dynamite combo, especially in the real world of detailing where a customer may be only willing to pay for like a one step polish. Maybe it's your car and you just want to buzz through it really quick and get it looking great. That is a great combo. This burgundy pad is one of my favorites. So that kind of takes care of that from like a liquid standpoint. And when it comes to towels, the number one towel I like is this. This is the Dreadnought, and now it comes in a couple different sizes. Uh, this is the original size of the towel, but this is a drying towel. So whether you foam a car or you use a rinseless wash, uh, the Dreadnought drying towel just seems to do uh, the best job for, or the best work for the job, which is getting the car dry, right? So again, this is the standard size. They now have a Dreadnought XL, Auto Fiber does, and they have a Dreadnought Mini. Um, so I had the Dreadnought XL and then managed to lose it somehow in my truck, so I need to order another. 
One thing that a lot of people ask me is, Jimbo, what towel do you like for quick detail sprays? And then Jimbo, what towel do you like for wax removal? What towel do you like for interior detailers or, and I, I just, tires, rims, all that. And so what I've done with Auto Fiber is I created the Jimbo kit. And what the Jimbo kit is, is in, on the back, you can see a list of everything and then what it is my go-to for. So. Right, we could get B-roll later. Don't worry about zooming in too much. Um, but basically what this kit is, is I went through every, every towel that Auto Fiber uh, had to offer and I used it for months across like different use applications. And then what I did was I said, okay, I really like uh, these window towels. I really like this for interior detailers. I really like this for wax removal. I like these for rims. I like these for tires and I culminated it into a kit and we called it the Jimbo kit because we couldn't think of any other good names. So um, the Jimbo kit has the skinny scrubbers in it, um, which I like for like steering wheel cleaning and stuff I'll talk about when we get to the interior uh, version of this video. Um, so there's that. And then more recently I created the Jimbo sack, which again just has more premium towels or not more premium towels, just has a different towel selection. It's kind of like a, like a bougie sack, a bougie sack. That sounds weird. Anyway, it has the dreadnought in it, a couple plush towels. Um, it's kind of a more curated, uh, specific, uh, limited run of towels. Whereas the Jimbo kit is more of a, uh, has a wide variety of towels. So, uh, for those people asking like, or what's your go-to quick detailer towel, what's your go-to wax removal, compound removal, whatever, uh, definitely consider checking out the Jimbo kit because it has such a wide variety of towels that are predominantly for exterior car care. So whew, with that said, I feel like I've just talked forever. I have no idea how long that's been, but this selection is my, are my go-to products for exterior car care. So a lot of you have asked about this video have wondered what products I use where. And so I thought this would be the most efficient way to showcase this. Again, if you wanna see exactly how each one of these products individually work, that's something that I'm putting in the ADP secrets. And you could check out more about that at adpsecrets.com. But this is the overview of all the exterior products I use. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know in the comments below if you use any of these products or how many products do you use for exterior car care? I'd love to start up a conversation in the comments below. And on your way down, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button. And I will catch you guys on the next video. See ya.